So in today's video, I want to give you some of my favorite recommendations for the accessories that you can combine with your Boss RC500 to expand your setup and get more out of the features that are present on this new loop station. Now the very first accessory that I recommend to get with the Boss RC500 is an external foot switch. Now on the back of the RC500, there is a connection that allows us to plug in either an external expression pedal or an external foot switch like this Boss FS6 that I use inside of my setup. Now the beauty of an external foot switch is we can map additional commands and controls to these two buttons. So for example, on foot switch A, you could assign something like loop track clear, and then on foot switch B, you could do something like variation change. So you could switch between variation A or drum groove B when you're using the onboard board drummer to spice up your performance. This is probably one of the best things to purchase when you're very early on using the looper pedal because it allows you to use the loop station more freely without having to use the DAF shortcuts to trigger specific commands. Now, if you're planning to use your Boss RC500 in a very portable setup and potentially use it very frequently outside where you don't have very easy access to a power source, you're obviously going to want to utilize the battery power capability of the RC500. Now obviously with the new RC500 there has been a decrease in the amount of lifespan that you get from using the AA batteries in the back of the loop station and if you want to learn about some of the reasons why that's happened you can check out this video over here. But what I recommend maybe taking a look at to save yourself a little bit of money in the long run is actually getting some rechargeable batteries so the one and a half hours lifetime doesn't become too critical when you're actually looping. Because obviously if you're looping, your show might be two hours long and you'd have to change batteries mid-performance. And that means if you're playing frequently, you're going to burn through a lot of batteries, which is very wasteful for both the environment and also your wallet. So you may wanna actually take a look at some rechargeable batteries. Now what I use with all of my music equipment is these Amazon Basics rechargeable batteries. I've had great experience using these on all of my wireless in-ear rigs and my wireless microphones across the few years that I've owned this set of batteries. It's very convenient. It comes with a charger, a full set of spare batteries, and it's really, really useful. I'll put a link in the video description down below so you can check it out. Now, my next recommendation is for all of the Boss RC500 power users out there that truly want to squeeze all of the features out of their loop station. Now, on the Boss RC500, we now have the integration of a MIDI in and a MIDI out port, which previously did not exist on the Boss RC30. And with these new connections has came a whole heap of new settings that we can set up and customize for some really advanced setups with this really compact loop station. Now, one of my favorite features with the MIDI is the ability to set up an external MIDI foot remote using MIDI CC data. So this means I can connect a foot switch like my very preferred Nectar Pacer. This is probably my favorite MIDI foot switch that I use with my looper pedals. I can connect this whole foot switch and map all of the different buttons to control different parameters on the RC500. So it's very similar to the FS6 external foot switch that we looked at at the start of this video, but it allows you to map more than just two buttons. You can map up to eight buttons I believe inside of the menu. And if you wanna learn how to do that, you can check out my ultimate guide linked in the video description down below, showing you the setup with the Nectar Pacer and the Boss RC500. Now, obviously, if you want to use the MIDI features, you're probably going to want to get the correct cable so you can connect your devices together. Now, if you're just going to be connecting the new Boss loop stations to new Boss hardware, all you're going to need is just a simple aux cord. But if you're wanting to connect your RC500 to legacy MIDI devices using the traditional five pin connection like my Nectar Pacer does, you're going to want the specific Boss official cable that allows you to connect a five pin MIDI device to a MIDI TRS jack that's on the RC500. Now an awesome feature about the Boss RC500 is the integrated XLR connection that allows you to plug a microphone directly into your looper pedal for vocal looping. Now me personally, I've used a variety of different styles of microphones with my loop stations and a really cool thing about the Boss RC500 is we now have more advanced audio routing capabilities that allows us to decide whether the microphone is being sent to the loop track that we're recording onto or whether it's just simply bypassing the loop tracks altogether. But a way to make this a little bit easier if you don't want to set that up inside of the menus, I highly recommend getting yourself a microphone that has a kill switch on it. So right here, I just have a sort of Shure FM57 style microphone in this sort of fancy encasement, but it has a kill switch that allows me to mute the microphone by turning it off, and then I can turn it back on when I actually want to record a loop. And this means I run a two microphone setup, especially when I'm doing acoustic guitar looping with the RC500. I have my primary microphone, it's my Sennheiser that goes directly into the PA speaker, and then I have my looping microphone that I can manually switch on and switch off whenever I actually want to use it for looping my backing vocals. 
Now the benefits of using the mute switch allows you to reduce the amount of ambient noise that is being recorded into your loops. For example, if you're on a really loud stage, it avoids the amount of crowd noise that's getting recorded into your guitar loop and it will reduce the chance of any feedback that may occur within your performance. Now, if you want to learn more about some of the settings on your Boss RC500, check out the link in the video description down below for my Boss RC500 Ultimate Guide, taking you through all of the different settings, allowing you to get the most out of your brand new loop station. But if you've enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. But as always, I've been Ben Rollins. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.